all of you who listen to Submersion and own an Android device, go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android device. I personally use the app and I love it. I can search for the podcast I want to listen to, select it as a favorite, and have it just a click away. Make sure to select Submersion as a favorite so you don't miss any of our new episodes. Again, the app is the Podcast Republic app, available on Android devices. Episode 109. Wow. Wow. Not to be, not to alarm you guys, but my computer's telling me I only have this amount. I have disk space remaining for recording. Only 2,156 hours. Holy shit. Oh, shit. Dude. We need to be careful. I only have 35 hours. Oof. Oh. I've got 80 hours. Ooh. 197. Don't worry about it. Did you put a new hard drive in or something, Zach? What the heck's going on with you? That's the M2, baby. That's the M2. Two terabytes. M2 is what I got my uh, operating system on. I use that sucker up first. Man. I'm on to my third SSD. I have a two terabyte. Mm -hmm. M2, I got a 500 gigabyte SSD, 128 gigabyte SSD, and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. That's yeah, pretty I good. Got, yeah, I got like a, a one terabyte GGH, and I got like a 2.6 terabyte LTS system um, upgraded using the newest um, generation <laughs> drive. You know what I'm talking about? That sounds like a bunch of horse sick. shit, Jamie. I don't, what? I'm not How buying. How dare you? I'm not buying what you're, what's the right speed on that? The right generation speed is at least seven. LTSC. Jo- ja- Dude, Jamie, that's maybe gonna, even eight. I push eight sometimes. Jamie, that's going to be a joke that time forgets. <laughs> nice. Oh, look at this. And we got a little transition by Zach. Wow. Hey, we're not ready to transition yet. We okay, haven't. fine. Yeah. Huh. I don't, I'm all good with not transitioning. What, what do we need to get out of the way here before we uh, have to submerge due to enemy contact? We need to, we need to talk about our website again, probably. Yeah, MackieStudios.com. Get over there. Get at us. Send us some mail. We love mail. It's easy to do. We love mail. We love getting it. We don't have any this week. What? Uh, what the heck, guys? So that's on you, listener. <laughs> if you want it, you come. You come get it. So, right? so just to ask, how do you? Is it linked to some kind of email address when you submit a question, or is it like totally just like anonymous? When you send in a question, no, you can you can submit anonymously. You can put your name in there. You can put an email. So hy- hypothetically, if we, I submitted something, would you know it's from me? I could not. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> unless, so, unless you name yourself Jamie, yeah, or the, or the ointment. Know. The ointment would be a big giveaway. You First be- name the second name ointment. Yeah, we might know. We might. What if we just get flooded with a bunch of people calling themselves the ointment now? <laughs> well, hey, that's all right, oh. man. We'll take any questions, right? Any and all. Yeah. Any and all. And yeah, we accidentally left Jamie off of that amazing discussion accidentally. last time. The one that <laughs> accidentally. It was accidental. <laughs> accidental. Sure. Okay. Do you think the listeners... You were all like, dude, I got to go get over to my pillow that I just bought from the My Pillow guy mm, sure. on a TV ad and just snuggle up and go to sleep. And we're like, okay. <laughs> Whoa, we forgot to do the question. And it's and it was the greatest question ever for me, specifically. All about dicks. Yeah, yeah. I talked about it day and night. And I got to say, your answers... Little lackluster. Really? No, I'm well. joking. I totally agreed with all of them. Okay. That, that was a joke. I, I would not have answered anything different other than the guy who killed his own family, obviously. Do you remember the scene I was talking about in Phantom? When he touched the guy's dick? Yeah, when he grabbed his dick when he fainted? Yeah. Yeah. You remember that? Mm-hmm. It's the origin of the dick joke, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Literally, no one had ever made a dick joke before oh, that scene. I know. It's incredible. Yeah. The birth of... The DJ. Jamie, what do you think's your second best running gag? Um Below Star- I don't know. starring Johnny Depp. Oh yeah, if only that came up more often. I mean, if only I mean, the word below is just die, 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 die. <laughs> What began as an innocent conversation among friends would soon spiral out of control and later be referred to by future generations as the eighth wonder of the modern world. 
Mac East Studios takes you on the journey of your lifetime as your captains, the artist formerly known as Brom, Jamie the Ointment, Kyle L. Capitan, and the gruesome twosome present Submersion. Got a little extra. Yeah. Got some juice in there. Hooting and hollering there, I think, from uh, gruesome. Over there. Did you know yeah. that in this movie that we watched, they actually sounded the horn and some guy actually yelled, dive, dive, dive. I thought you were going to use that for today, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, you were You were very wrong. Yeah. Uh, Brom, in a future episode, can you do top 10 Awuga dive, dive, dives? Not from us, but from movies. Ooh, that would be, that'd be a lot of work. It'd be hard, really hard. I'd have to pretty much go back and rewatch every movie. <laughs> if you, all right, if you do that, there's a list of things I want you to look for in a movie okay. for future trivia. <laughs> I've already done this with every episode we've recorded. I've listened to every episode now like two or three times uh, for my various countdowns. So I've definitely committed. Well, I think someone else yeah. can take the reins for that one. Oh, Jamie, sounds like you've just volunteered yourself for that. Well, no, because I there's been times when for by no. movie I don't know if you guys knew this, but I also have a website um, separate from your guys's website. Uh, had it before. That's no called big deal. our there we go. website, Jamie. Um, it's called badmovietwins.com. That's badmovietwins.com. And Jamie's at one point, third best. Jamie's third best running gag. What badmovietwins.com? That's yeah. badmovietwins.com. Uh, uh, yeah, it is kind of third. It's kind of a second tier one. Uh, but uh, that one, I at one point I was going to get all of the bad movie twins movies and you know try to figure out different tropes and mark them out and stuff like that until i realized that we had watched over 500 movies yeah and i was like yeah that didn't happen there's just not enough time <laughs> no i could do one every day and it would still take what like six or seven years i can't do the math but it's hard kyle you can you're you're an accountant how many years yeah is that? you could you could get it done in under two jamie what if you did every day every single day that's why they call you the brain. Speaking of Jamie uh, and his bad movies, uh, he is curating another bad movie month for us that will be uh, coming oh. down the pike here. You guys are letting me do it? Yeah, man. Yes. I don't think we have a, much of a choice, but we do have a couple newer ones also that we should probably knock out. I have sure. to do we'll the Tom Hanks a little one. bit later. Tom Ooh, Hanks one is coming out July very 10th. soon. July 10th. Guys, don't stop, don't stop on my countdown here. Mm. Oh, okay. We won't. We will not do that. Uh, why don't we go ahead and hop on into this one? I think this is even earlier than we already had sounded the alarm in the last episode. But Yeah, we're doing, we're we doing should, pretty good. We're doing pretty good. We're moving on a yeah, pretty good clip here. We talked yeah. about future months, but we still had one film we needed to complete to wrap up our current cycle, which is the Mega Monster Movie Month. Final week, everybody. We made it through. Uh, it will be interesting to see what your favorite Mega Monster movie was. But tonight, we are going to be recapping and reviewing what? Go ahead and take it away for us. Gruesome. Uh, I don't even have it open. What was it? The, <laughs> the Land That Time Forgot, a 1975 thriller. You guys are going to want to stick around because this one was awesome. <laughs> Thrilled and chilled. And it was starring Doug McClure as Bowen Tyler, John McKierney as Captain Von Schoenvortz. I'm sure I said that very wrong. Uh, <laughs> great, great. You can play that one right after this, too. Uh, Susan Pengligon as Lisa Clayton. Beautiful, beautiful lady. And Keith Burton as Bradley. Anthony Ainley as Dietz, ah, and Dietz. Godfrey James as Borg. We often talk about cyborgs, half cyborgs. That's a half never cyborg. Just, never just the Borg. No, that's I don't a know half. Why we... isn't a half a cyborg? Oh my God, he is half cyborg. Yeah, he's Borg. Or did he just be Org at that point? Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. He's or more cyb. What is he? Two thirds cyborg. Yeah. That's what we're looking at here. Do you think anyone? Anyways, think anybody's actually named Borg? I hope so. That's a great name. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if there's somebody. There's gotta be. Yeah, Borg, 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 Borg. It's Bjorn, Bjorn's yeah. brother, Borg. Borg, Bjorg, Bjornson. There's, there's no, 
just Borgs in the Ohio Educators Database. <laughs> I think you gotta you gotta look over in Europe or something, right? <laughs> There's Borgen. <laughs> Borgen, like Morgan? Yes, and Bor <laughs> and there's Borgert. Wait, like yogurt? Wait, <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, <laughs> that's okay. a great name. I'm glad we're I'm glad we're laser focused today, <laughs> Mister Borgert. <laughs> Can I go Wait, to is that his first name or last name? It's last name, dude. Oh, Borgert. Yeah, man. Borg Borgerson. Borg Borgerson. Borgman. Borgren. Borger. Borges. Oh, there's tons, man. It's lots. Borgonio. It's lots. Wow, that's a fancy dressed up Borg they're, right there. There's Stukenborg. The Borg Ooh. Collective. <laughs> Borg Collective. <laughs> there's Vinborg. Like Vin Diesel, but yeah. Vinborg? <laughs> yeah. Your name Wait, is, that, is that our actual name of someone? Or are we just like spouting actual people's Dude, names? This is real. Everything I've said is real. Oh, no, no, no. It's last names. Anybody can have these. Don't start oh, anybody can work, have these super hyper common last names. Borg. Vin Borg. Anyways, should we get into this? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. So we open as happens a lot in these old timey adventure novels where we see a like barrel fall into the ocean. It floats along for a while. We're hearing all the music. Boo doop 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 ba doo doop doop. Land the time forgot. That was the theme song. I don't know if you guys remember that. But, yeah, dude, uh, it was a hell of a theme song. I think mm -hmm. Donny Osmond did it, right? I think so. And then, yeah, there was a lot, a lot of saxophone, um, a little clarinet in there. Boop, 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 boop. A little Kenny G came in there. Oh, yeah. And uh, someone, a fisherman, or a guy, like, walking along the shore, finds this barrel, opens it up. Uh-oh, there's a note inside. And it's like, yo, bros, you're not even going to believe my story. And I feel like that that's how a lot of these novels happen. It's kind of like Island of Dr. Moreau, where it's like, Oh man, I, I never believed this would happen to me. It's like a almost like a play a penthouse like letter or something. Oh boy, you never believe it. I couldn't believe this situation. It was so crazy. And we get into the thrust of the story, which you know, according to this um, barrel note, has happened sometime in the past during World War One. Uh oh. And so here we go. And right here, I think we should just announce to our listeners: if you have a crazy story you don't think we believe. Send it to us. We'll read it on air. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really good. Well, <laughs> we'll do them. All of a sudden, this podcast just becomes us reading like scandalous letters. Like, oh my God. Oh boy. That's they don't have to be like, yeah, they don't have to be scandalous or anything like that. Do but, they have you know. to have submarines in them though? Uh, they do not. It is preferred, but we'll just take anything we can get, right? You just said anybody listening to this podcast can send us anything so we can. We'll is that read what you it. said? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. A story that they think that oh, we will boy. not believe. Anyways, World War I is happening, and there is a boat going along, and a submarine is there, and it's the U-33, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Yes. And the captain's like, uh, we're going to take that guy out. And they do, and they're like, uh, should we worry about the survivors? Like Dietz, who's the asshole of this whole thing, is sitting there being like, we should kill them all. They could be future enemies of ours. And... Uh, the captain's like, no. So we know he's a nice guy, even though he's German. And he's like, we're not going to do that. And eventually, the, you know, these, the boats are out there. We see our main character, played by McClure, uh, Bowen Tyler, uh, in a boat with uh, Lisa Clayton. And they're kind of floating around. And they're not looking super great, a little worse for wear. And they Now, did you notice here that she is soaking wet, like yeah. head to toe? And then he's just like in some wool sweater looking pretty dry. Right. By design, I believe. I think that's probably right. Yeah. They're just like, throw more water on her. And uh, they they kind of, they're able to meet up with some of the other people from this ship that had just been torpedoed. And they see the um, submarine surfacing because it's pretty foggy and they didn't see the uh, the lifeboats when they decided to surface. So they're coming up. They're going to get air and stuff like that um, as submarines are want to do in that time. And uh, McClure is like, yo, we're going to, I know these submarines like the back of my hand. My dad like invented them, basically. Don't even worry about it. And I am, we're going to storm in and we're going to take it over and we're going to take it to Britain. And we're not going to let them, you know, uh, take us captive and not going to die out here. And everyone's like, yeah, good plan. And so they climb up on the submarine and they subdue 
the people on the submarine and take over. And they put the it's captain It's a pretty the cool, like, actual fight scene. I wasn't expecting this. No. This in whole, this movie at all. This whole, I front, mean, this whole front part is very unexpected because it's very submarine heavy. Almost like it's like a war movie. And, I mean, to be, I mean, even to step a little bit on my review, it's really well made compared to, like, the latter half of the movie. Um, oh, definitely. In, like, a weird way. Like, it's almost like... It's almost like they had half of a movie that was like enemy below style, like actual good movie. And then they were like, and now we got to put dinosaurs. <laughs> and they it's like totally <laughs> right. flubbed it. I'm like, oh boy, those dinosaurs didn't I mean, the out. first first half hour is straight on the sub. I was shocked yeah, by that. I really didn't think shocked. that we were going to get that much sub at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah not a, at all. That was something I wrote down even in my notes. I was like, all right, the, the 33 minute mark is now <laughs> they're dinosaurs. <laughs> right. Yeah, so the guys come up through the hatch, and I mean, we get a pr pretty funny fight. I'm uh, not funny, but I mean, we get a good fight scene yeah. here. And something I thought that was funny was pretty much anybody is assumed dead slash incapacitated if you just throw them off into the water. They're no longer right. a problem. They're not going to try to get back on the sub. Apparently, this but. this scene though, when you said that fight scene, is this like when that dinosaur comes out of the water and starts attacking him, Kyle? No, 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 no. This is we're at the beginning. Oh. Yeah, we were just talking about how long. Okay, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> and so yeah. <laughs> they're able to get on there. They they kind of take command, um, and before they are able to um, stop them, Dietz destroys the radio. So they're like a little bit they're they're out of communication and stuff like that, which makes for not a not a super great thing because they're able to get into a shipping lane and actually see, I think, a British boat or American boat or something, and the American boat or whoever is none too happy about it because here's a german submarine sitting there and they start bombing them and they have to like kind of escape so they're like okay instead of you know doing that whole thing we're going to try to get this submarine down to um to america like that's our closest way so we're going to try to go uh you know do west and just like make it to the make it to america and so they're going 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 and they're going for a really long time and they're like we should have hit america like long ago we're lost just a minute and uh, McClure's like, wait a second. And he lifts up the compass. And probably Dietz, that asshole, has put like a little magnet on it and made it look like they were going west when in fact they were going south. So they're going south towards South America. And they went so far, they made it all the way to South America. And they're basically like, uh, we're going to run out of fuel. So <laughs> you have to dock in South America. And, and, you know, they were like German sympathizers or, or something. Like basically it was like going to be with Germans. And they were going to rendezvous with a German ship um down there and they are able to escape and kind of like take back over the boat and the germans are like haha idiots we got this and they go to the supply boat where they're going to get fuel and stuff like that and the american or the, well whoever the americans british whoever they were really um uh, take back over the boat uh while they're up trying to like signal this like supply ship and send off some torpedoes and totally blow it to smithereens and the Germans are now like, at this point too. Idiots. The Germans are standing on top of the sub, and I instantly thought because they were being real sneaky about yeah. it. I'm like, okay, they're going to close Submerge. and steal that hatch and dive this boat, and those guys are gone. But they didn't do that at all. But they did sink that whole sh supply ship, which the one I think it was Dietz. He's like, you guys are idiots. He's like, we only have supplies for a week and a half. We're going to die. Right. And it's they're right. like, ah, we don't care. Yeah, they're like, Oop, <laughs> who cares? And they're like, basically, they're like, I guess we'll just like let the current take us and we'll go like real slow and conserve fuel. And they're going and they end up in the middle of icebergs. Basically, it seems like maybe they made it to, to uh, Antarctica, but they are like, that doesn't make a lot of sense. This maybe makes some sense with this like legend of a guy named Caproni who discovered a land called Caprona, but no one was able to find it. And they see kind of like a, a weird island and they're like, that must be Caprona. That must be where we are. And they kind of, they're able to see that coming out of the island is a river and the river's warm and fresh water. And so they're like, huh, like, well, with this, you know, beautiful, luxurious submarine, this thing, this uh, marvel of... Uh, technology, we can make it up this river, NBD. And they're like, no way. And he's like, uh, I know submarines. My dad built them. They invent he invented them. He's the inventor of a submarine. I invented submarines. So I'm, I can take you up this river. And they're like, do it then. And so they go up this river. <laughs> well, and it's he really says hard. that, but then he goes to the captain. He's like, I'm going to need a little bit of help yeah. here because uh, hey, I might have bit off more than I can chew right now. Well, it's, it's tight because they keep on. They're like, 
basically destroying the submarine and like trying to get around these corners and keep on hitting the wall and like forcing their way through. But eventually they're able to get all the way through and they're in this, what looks like kind of like a paradise. It's, you know, they've got, you know, fresh water. Although when they started investigating it, because the thing is, Lisa Clayton was a scientist. She was on the boat for to be a scientist, I guess. And so is the captain. The captain has a background. The German captain has a background in science. And they're both kind of studying the water. And they're like, weird. The organisms here are totally unexpected. And we're not sure we can even like necessarily drink the water. But they're also seeing some crazy shit. They're looking around. They see some super hyper-realistic dinosaur puppets. And it's like, whoa. Is that a real dinosaur? I got For a second, I was like, is this Jurassic Park? Did they make Jurassic Park? Because it's so real. And there's like these pterodactyls. And I was like, whoa, is that a real pterodactyl? Did, did they breed pterodactyls for this movie? That's what I was asking. They did. They, they weren't even flying on strings or anything, man. No. Yeah, no, you could tell. You could tell. It's probably why it cost a million dollars because they had to breed all those pterodactyls. It's craziness. Yeah. And almost instantly, people just start getting killed and eaten by giant crocodiles and water dinosaurs what i don't know what the term is what they uh, i mean are. they have a li- if, if people are interested the wikipedia has a full list of all the dinosaurs seen in this movie it was like a diplo diplonyacus or something like that diplo diplo and skrillex uh oh. saurus and wow. all those guys were in it wow a marshmallow saurus out there <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, i like that one yeah i'll be here all night guys so anyways. Yeah, so anyways, they get – some guy just gets absolutely nommed by one, and then they are able to kill one, and, and they, they almost they have, instantly forget cut. that a crew member was just killed. They, always, yeah, they have a feast. They're just like, mm, yeah, delicious. I'd be a little worried. I'd be like, can my, can my body even, like, digest this? I have even no idea. It's a dinosaur. It's a fucking dinosaur. It's meat, baby. I don't know, because, like, even, like, a raw potato would make me sick, right? I have to cook it. I guess they cooked it, but like, who yeah. knows if it's poisonous? That's true. There's that one, uh, like a that one puffer fish, right? That if you cut exactly. it wrong, it's very toxic. How do you know a this, dinosaur is not like this that? This captain is just like, I made it like like a shepherd's pie or some shit. And they were like, great. Chow down. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess it's scientists. They are scientists, the captain and that and the lady. We have a scientist here. Alex, uh, what would you do if a dinosaur was killed and brought to you to eat? I don't know. Science. Do cool. you want me to science that thing up? Science it up. Yes. Yeah. Well, the first problem is how do you know at what temperature you can cook that thing and be healthy? You know? Good point. You're never going to know. Second off, you could probably fashion a lot of the other parts. You can make blankets. You can probably use tools. You mm. could use that dinosaur for a lot. Or uh, just take out the teeth because that thing had a ton of teeth. If I, or am I thinking of that pterodactyl? Well, they all had a lot of teeth. Didn't they? Okay. You can make an awesome necklace out of that. It's not really science. It's more fashion. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. I true. imagine it would be probably chicken adjacent. I mean, with how That's a good closely point. related they are to birds. And uh, things like alligators are always said to taste like chicken. That's a good point. No, that's probably right. Probably we would be okay because it's probably just like chicken. That's right. Just make sure it's well cooked. Yep. So anyways, they head on to land and pretty quickly they start to – there's like people kind of like stocking them a little bit. Primitive people. Indigenous Um, tribes. Yes. And they leap out and go to town. I think even someone dies here maybe. Uh, but they're able to knock out one of the indigenous people and then scare off and kill the other ones. And so they grab this dude and they're like, we're taking him back. So they take him back to the submarine and he's basically like a caveman. Story. And, but he can, yeah, he can talk. He reminds me of the, uh, is it the Geico commercial caveman? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's what he looks that, like. I mean, that's, sure. that's what these guys look like. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. They look like uh, it's, it's, what's his name? Isn't it? It's like that's all based off of um, Piltman, Pilt the Pilt the Piltman skull or something, right? Hmm. But then that was like uh, a hoax because they turns out the scientists lied about it back in the early 1900s. But I, I gotta look know. this up. I, I'll, 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 I'll I'll Zach back. I I'll, found I'll do, it. It is, it is it is the Pilt Down Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
But it turns yeah. out the scientist that claimed like this was a skull from five hundred thousand years ago, he just used an orangutan skull and like fastened it to this human skull, and that was what he presented. And that's and they they all believed it for like four years. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. dude, science, <laughs> science. What do you have to so say anyways, for yourself, Alex? Absolutely nothing. Okay. <laughs> and so, Alm, I think his name is Alm. Is that right, Alm? Alm. The uh, the caveman. He's basically, he's talking Borg. to them. What's that? I thought it was Borg, right? Is it? Borg. Whatever. He is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, basically talking to them, telling them a, a little bit. They can kind of understand a little bit about the island. There's like multiple layers of like uh, these tribes that are um, smarter as you, you go up the chain. So he's kind of the lowest level tribe. And through time, this is what they glean. He's going to become smarter and eventually be in the smartest of all the tribes, which he kind of points to the people and say like, oh, you're kind of that tribe. And they also light, they light like a lighter and he's like, oh, fucking fire. But, like, why do you have it in your hands? That comes from the ground. And they're like, holy shit. He's talking about oil. He knows what oil is. That's a fact. Yeah, they jumped to some conclusions here pretty darn quick. And I got to say, these guys are pretty smart because they're dead on. Right. And uh, his name is Om, by the way. Om. And, uh, and so they, they're like, Om, you're going to take us this goddamn oil because we can refine it we can build a refinery and i was like really and they like, apparently and uh they're like that's gonna be terrible for the engines so like well, it's not terrible enough to not get us out of here because we can make enough garbage garbage fuel to get us back to civilization and the guy's like okay and so he's like um you're taking us there and they get to a point where there's a bunch of skulls and stuff and i'm like i'm not going past that and they're like yeah you are and deets being an asshole like shoots a skull, is like get over there, and forces Om to go forward with them. And he forces them in there. They get attacked, but they're able to like get rid of them. Some some more people die every once in a while. A bunch of people die, um, but they're like, yeah. eh. Uh, they well, one like, thing eh. that we should notice that show, or sorry, we should bring to people's attention is that Om is of superior intelligence because you will notice when he was on the submarine, he did pick up. And show a wrench. She's like, ah, oh, this guy, this guy knows. That's that happened a little while ago, but it's just something that I forgot to mention. Yeah. So they, so once they get rid of all the people, they kind of find the oil pit. There's a bunch of like dinosaur skulls in it. Just to let you know it's an oil pit that things can maybe fall into. And they're like, this is our goddamn oil. So they start setting up a uh, camp there and to build the refinery and stuff. And I'm like working away. He's like real interested in like. Kind of helping out, so like teaching them how to saw, do all kinds of stuff like that. And um, the lady and the submarine captain continue to do experiments. They're seeing how, like, as they move up a river, things evolve. Like everything kind of comes from like the lowest level of single cell bacteria and microbes and all that, all the way up to the highest form. So everything's constantly evolving. So time doesn't work the same way as like we know it. Basically, these animals and stuff like that go through an entire evolutionary million-year span through their life cycle. Um, That's right, because Om kept saying that eventually he will be the highest. Yeah, he's going to be the also, top. Also, he can't really speak. He can't really – so he's doing a lot of hand gestures and grunting and stuff. But right. he will be like them eventually, and they say – well, that can't happen, but they said, no, he's going to do it in his lifetime. Yeah. And at one point, we get a scene where he's kind of like sawing away. He's feeling pretty good about himself. He's like sawing. He's like, cool. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of like the higher beings come around the corner, higher beings being still cavemen, but smarter, I guess. And they kind of like look at him, and he looks up, and all of a sudden, he's like smarter. And he like walks into the forest and becomes like part of their tribe. So you see the evolution happen in that moment for him. And so it's a beautiful moment in cinematic history, really. It's truly beautiful. And so they're gonna they need just some food. I think I think they're getting close to refining all the oil, like they're having a jolly good time. There's like a fight at one point, like basically like UFC. They invented UFC uh, while they were doing this. Everyone's having like a grand time watching a couple people like punch each other in the face. Like sweet. It was really odd because I mean, right now we do have the captives and the Germans and it was decided a while ago the war in Europe doesn't really matter down here. Like, we just need to do anything to survive. 
enemies must right. become friends. And these two guys are kind of jawing at each other a little bit. He's like, this captain, what did he say? It was something, I don't know. So, something about how the captain's so great. And he's like, oh, the captain couldn't stop a lifeboat from taking over his sub. Right, yeah, yeah. Like, as long as Boom! there's not any life, lifeboats around or something, he'd be fine. Yeah. Oh, because he's talking about sinking a British uh, tanker. Yeah, something like that. And so... Yeah, people are literally like choking each other out in a mud pit and everybody's just laughing. I thought yeah. that scene was very peculiar. Yeah, even McClure comes over like, <laughs> great. <laughs> Good time. <laughs> he's supposed to be the leader. He's like, perfect, lighting off a little steam. Um, and But like the, the captain didn't really like it. But And the problem really was that Dietz was involved and Dietz is an asshole. So who wants to see that really? He just Nobody. Likes- so anyways, they're, they're almost done getting all the oil, and they're like, okay, we need some more food, so one more hunting expedition, one more barrel, and we should be good to go. And they're like, as long as nothing like crazy happens, like a volcanic eruption, and they all laugh a bunch, like, <laughs> uh, what, what a crazy coincidence that would be. And they're like, that's true. And so then they head off into the forest, and they're, you know, searching around, but then they get... Um, they kind of make it far enough that they see like the top civilization. They like break into the forest, like, holy shit, look at that. And there's like an actual community, houses and stuff, and then a bunch of naked ladies. And you couldn't really see it. I had to really put on, I had to put on those glasses, but then I had to like pull down one of those, you know, if you're like looking at a diamond or something, you had to pull down like, a little microscope in front of your glasses. You know oh, what I'm I about? know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did that, but I still couldn't see anything. And then, but they were like bathing in a pool and they're like, that's how it works. That's the evolution. All the microbes falling like, off their oh, body. It makes sense. That's what, now there's going to be people later. That's, that's how it works. And I was like, cool. But then a bunch of like the warriors come out and attack them and they kill a bunch of people. You know, they, they scare them off and then they're going to chase, they're going to chase after them and try to like, you know, get back to camp and they kill a couple more. It looks like McClure is going to get killed but it turns out that om's there and om's like yo bro <laughs> i'm here now too i'm like smart well, now. mcclure straight up tries to shoot him yeah you remember oh, no. that he yeah, pulls yeah, the exactly. trigger and but he's, he's like, got nothing gets left jammed. yeah yeah and i'm like what the heck dude that's that's, that's your om. bro and then om's like oh shit watch out and there's like a pterodactyl and again hyper real at a certain point i thought the pterodactyl was in my house i was like oh shit like it was such like p- p- perfect graphics and like puppetry I was like, whoa, is that a pterodactyl? And it kind of flies around and uh, they look horrified a bunch of times until eventually Om is like grabbed up by this pterodactyl and flown away. That's right. And the time for God, too. We don't see him again, do we? No, he's dead because he got flown away by a pterodactyl. Well, presumably he could also just be taken to the nest of the pterodactyl. True. Where he will now be raised as a pterodactyl. Mm, It's like After Earth starring Jaden Smith and Will Smith. Exactly like it. Just like that, where he became a friend of a bird. That's an actual part of that movie. Wow. A bird becomes his friend. Good. Well, there you go. <sighs> Anyways, I'm just remembering after us. It's really great. Uh, and so, uh, but then the girl is like taken by the tribe. Um, Elisa. And, and so McClure kind of ch- chases after them and... He's up on like a hill and he sees she's able to kind of get away from them for a second because there's a bunch of people competing over like getting her, which is a little weird. But like they get distracted with the fight again, like UFC style, where everyone's like, sweet fighting. And uh, Lisa's able to get away. And all of a sudden, a volcano just starts erupting, going nuts. And so they're like running along, but like rocks are falling and things are exploding. And and Dietz is like, we got to get the fuck out of here. And they're like, wait, but McClure is still out there. We got to wait for him. And Dietz is like, hell no, let's just get on that submarine and get the hell out of here. Now, granted, Dietz turns out to be kind of right. I think they may have missed their moment for getting on that submarine and getting out of there. Um, But anyways, they delay, 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 and then eventually they run back to the submarine and they get on it. And they keep on wanting to like, wait, we got to wait for McClure. And we see McClure and him and Lisa are like running along, running along. And things are getting crazy. Like the lake that the submarine's in, it's getting hot, like crazy hot. And the whole submarine's like kind of starting to get real hot. And Dietz is like, we got to F and dive. And again, Dietz is an asshole, but kind of right right now. Like probably should get out of there. Yeah. And so he starts to dive. McClure and Lisa get to the shore. And they are um, basically looking at the submarine like, hey, wait for us. You got to wait for us. 
and they're yeah. like, hell no. Really belabored we scene. Like it, it seemed like they just kept cutting back and forth. Like we get it, the subs leaving without them. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's kind of how I like like how I forgot the, the really really long scene with them with those uh, with those triceratops at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The battle where it totally gores the T Rex, and then they and then they shoot like rockets at the uh, triceratops. Like I still don't really know what the point of that scene was. Just to show just them to slaughter slaughter the uh, the poor t indigenous fauna, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like, wait, but what were they doing? They just had they like literally showed them having eggs, and they were like, blast them away. It's like, what? Like, it's like a mom and dad and tri triceratops with eggs, and you're like, fucking bomb them, yeah. right? They're monsters. They even call them monsters. Like, destroy those monsters, dude. It's manifest destiny. Yeah. I don't know. And so uh, they're like, wait for us. And they're like, no, dive. Wait for us. No, dive. And then when they finally dive, everyone's on the submarine, like, choking to death. And then the submarine sinks because it's so hot and, like, gets destroyed. And then they're, so they're waiting there. And you're sitting there being like, okay, so the lake is boiling, but these two people on the shore are fine. Okay, I guess I'll buy it. And so they start traveling north. And they're basically, like, the only people left. And he's like... Despite the entire movie, I know they're I know they were technically together this entire movie, but at no point did they have like a romantic relationship that we saw on Not screen. Not even close. And he's like, eh, at least the only thing I can take solace in is that is if I was going to live, that I lived with Lisa because I'm so in love with her. And I was like, wait, what? I didn't even get that you two were even together. <laughs> I thought you were just like colleagues on a boat. They're just keeping it classy in the 1970s, man. I'm going to guess. But so then he's like, but at least we get the bone now that we're like traveling in the snow. And then they get all the way up to the top and, or like into like the snow and stuff like that. And they're like, uh, one last thing we got to do, we got to put this note in the thing. And they shove a note into a, a thing and calling all the way back to the beginning of the film, they toss it into the water. And what's cool, you yep. could just watch the movie on loop. So you just, it's like it never ends, right? Yeah, we could. You could just start it right oh. over. And go. I do have one last question to ask everyone. What was your favorite um, special effect in the movie? Hmm. Probably the volcano blowing. That was actually pretty good. I liked how they incorporated like stock footage. Plus, it, it did seem really treacherous the there way they did a, it. There was a shot of the Earth rupturing in like two... Mm. Um, from like the earthquake and like fire shot out of it that actually looked halfway decent. Good. Two serious answers. That's good. Who's going to say the, the pterodactyl, which looks like pterodactyl. Shit. Perfect. It was Zach. Uh, there was a scene that I thought could have been really cool. It was right at the beginning when that sub is surfacing in the mist. Mm. And I don't know if it's because we were watching it for free on YouTube or whatever, but it was really like jerky when it was coming up out of the water. No, because it's like a little model or whatever. Yeah, yeah and that could, if that was smooth, it would have been really slick. Yeah. Mine was actually when they were at the end, when the volcano was going off and they were in the submarine, the captain tries to pull his dick one last time. And like a scene from um, the thing, it like melts and it's like super gruesome. Oh, yeah, it is a great scene. Mm -hmm. It's like a wick and then his body explodes. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you remembered it the same way I did. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that is the land that time forgot. Bow. Free on YouTube. Anyone can watch it. Uploaded by Doug McClure himself. I, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I doubt it's really him, but there's that username uploaded it. And not to be confused with there, there is a remake. Or I guess a, a second adaption of the film that was made in like 2009 or something like that. A TV movie. Yes. Yes. Not that one? Not that one. We do Yet. have that one, though, for eventual watching. So we should get into some ratings here. Who wants to start? Oh, Ooh, man, that's, silence. That's, that's a lot of dead. That's a lot of dead that's, air. That's a lot of dead Dude, space. Is that six seconds? I, <laughs> I feel like the captain's, captain's got to rescue it. When All it's right, like that. I, take, will take start, the lead. I yeah. will start here. Like you'd mentioned, Jamie, this movie, when it started, it is a very well-done sub-movie for the first 30 minutes. It's very interesting. You keep seeing 
people taking over the sub. It gets taken back by the other team. Oh, guess what? We're going to take it back. And then it just goes off the rails, and I know it has to, right? Because that's the way this story goes. But the the effects in this movie, I thought, I mean, whatever. It's 1975. Yeah, but think Two about years it. before Star Wars comes out. Exactly. When did we? When did? When was uh, that previous monster movie we did from the one with the big octopus? What year was that one? That was fifties, right? Fi- yeah, right. Like twenty years earlier. Yeah, yeah. That better, was yeah. better special effect, better monster effects than this. I mean, this is true. This movie came out the same year. Nineteen seventy-five was a big year. You got what? One flew over the cuckoo's nest and Jaws. Like. Yeah, and if you think about One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, crazy monster effects in that one. <laughs> yeah. Right? Jack Huge. Nicholson? My God. But no, that other yeah. um, uh, Monty Python, I think, right, Kyle? Holy Grail came out that year? And the Holy Grail came out this year? I think. And that movie is phenomenal on a next-to-nothing budget. But, but Jaws, <laughs> it, is, it is an interesting um, comparison to, say, Jaws, because Jaws, I think, struggled – some with the effects given the budget and stuff like that. Oh, in my, yeah, those, in my hometown. those behind the scenes stories with the shark are really awesome to hear about. It's right, so but, cool. but it does tell you a little bit different. Like here, they looked at the, their creature effects and they said, excellent, go for it. <laughs> in Jaws, they were like, that shark isn't going to be doing anything. Don't ever show it. And it worked out beautifully for them to be like, it's something you barely see. And that's kind of the part of the movie. It's like you barely ever see the shark. And you could have done that here, but I think you would have had to had a more ah, what's the word i don't you'd have to have tribal indigenous people that could communicate yeah. because right i mean or some kind of paintings or something be like okay look at these paintings like there's giant dinosaurs here or something yeah, and the you get the one because you think about i mean what godzilla what was that 54 the original yep. one yep. Mm. yeah and i mean that looks awesome and it's dark and it's the effects are cool here, I think they wanted more. Like, okay, we want two T-Rexes on the screen. Okay, we want a Triceratops goring a T-Rex. And if you don't have the budget for it, you can't make it really look good. And something I also thought here, the, a lot of the character development was kind of lost. People were dying. Like, you didn't care who they were. You're just like, okay, whatever. People, Jamie, you'd mentioned, were in love at the end. Yeah. Didn't see that coming. No. Nope. But, and also... Part of me thinks that this makes for a good, like, setup, or you just need a longer movie to really show because I'm, what is going to happen, like, their journey to get to the end of, quote unquote, the end of the earth and throw that message off. I mean, there, is a, there like, is a sequel, by the way. Okay. Well, then, but then they already threw the message off. Yeah. But I think they, they, they meet people. I think the next one's gotcha. called The People That Time Forgot. See, I think you do this, like three movies, and then the end of the third movie is them throwing that capsule off into the water. But <laughs> so you're what saying do I know, man? Lord of the Rings? Oh, no, I was going to say, yeah, I think exactly. actually this would be nine movies. I think you split this one into three movies, and then you make a second movie that's actually three movies, and then a third movie that's also three movies. I like that. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. So all those things said, this movie's okay. It's, I mean, it's fine. It's not great. It is what it is. The thing I think, if you remake this, sorry, I know this is total aside. I didn't know Doug McClure was going to look exactly like uh, Michael C. Hall. I That was the whole time I was like, wow, he looks a lot like him. See, it's funny you'd say that he looks just like, I thought he looked like one of the guys from the league. Oh, really? Yeah. If you, if oh, you, have you ever seen that MacArthur? movie? MacArthur? Yeah, MacArthur. Yeah, exactly. A little bit. Well, anyways, I need to eventually come to a rating on this. I'm going to go ahead and give it like a, oh, man, what did I give last week? Was last week a four? This I'm going to give a, I'll I'll give this a four. Oh, okay. I can jump in. I'm going to go higher than you, mostly because the the front of the movie. Um, If you just want to watch something like an actual good thing, just watch the first 30 minutes of this movie. The first 30 mo- minutes of this movie is somehow like <laughs> one of the one of the better submarine movies I've seen uh, recently. It's actually really, really good. The latter half is, is just not very good, mostly because the effects 
aren't very good. I did kind of enjoy how dark the ending was. The fact that like everyone dies and they like are traveling through misery as like that's the entire life looks like it's going to be garbage from the non um, living as like cave people. But like and the everyone on the submarine dies and like melts. Um, but you know the, the the effects just didn't really hold up and it kind of slowed down as they were trying to show off some of these dinosaurs and stuff like that. Uh, for no reason, because I mean, the quotes on this are crazy. Like people are like, "Man, we really knew we had something when we saw those puppets." It's like what? Like they were actually really proud of like the effects that they had for this guy. Uh, maybe it was the budget or whatever, but I mean, I guess if, yeah. If you look at budget, given the time, I mean, maybe, but maybe. still, I don't even know. I think you got better stuff. I don't even know. It looked crazy. Some it of the dinosaurs like look better than others, for what it's worth. The Triceratops, I guess, look better than the Trianosaurus. Trianosaurus look crazy. Yeah. And but. the pterodactyl was like moving, you know, flying through the air, but like not f like the body wasn't oh, moving, boy. which looked yeah, silly. Not at all. Yeah, it was crazy. The, the pterodactyl was actually, that was the worst one. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that, that the front part of this movie is a really good movie. And I think it's a testament to probably the filmmaker. I don't know what else he did. And the actors as well, I thought they were doing a really good job in that first one. And you could see, you could have seen a movie of them making that be the entire thing, of then them being kind of stranded and trying to survive as their like submarine has run out of fuel and stuff like that, just being a good classic submarine film. So I'm not going to go as low as you. I think, see, I'm debating between a five and a five and a half. I think I'm going to come in at a five because it's not a good movie, but I think it lands kind of in the middle. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I mean, when you talk about that first half of the movie, it is really good. Yeah, surprisingly. It's good. unexpected, actually. Jamie, what At was At least your from score? my perspective. I'm going to do five. Five? I'll yeah. jump in with mine. I I guess my feelings are pretty much similar to your guys's. You know, it's I get that it's a movie of the time. and the, I mean, they're like using puppets rather than like trying to get crazy with the visuals and stuff, but I just didn't really get engrossed in this. You know, I like the sub action. <laughs> so obviously the first 30 minutes, but even then, like actually after like the 20 minute mark, I even made a note. I was like, all right, I'm getting, when are we getting to the Island of the dinosaurs? <laughs> like when's this movie actually going to take off? But you know, I mean, a lot of sub action, that's good. And it even came down to the end of the movie with the sub going down. And I like that. That was cool. You know, it's like heating up. That was, that was neat. Um, but this wasn't like, the, the like it's just dinosaurs this isn't like a sweet giant kick-ass monster fight like that just never even happened so i was disappointed with that and i was disappointed with the lack of romantic comedy so <laughs> i'm gonna give this i'm gonna go on the middle 4.5 all right Alex, you want to go? Jerusalem? Sure. So, watching this, I uh, enjoyed it quite a bit. The first half of the movie, as you guys have all said, was awesome. I can't get over. I wish they could make another movie like that. Um, but the reason I really liked it when it started off is because these Germans are just blasting civilians. Awesome. Um, <laughs> and then the Americans blast the German civilians. They come back and do it twice. So we got two ships blown up. You know, we got the fish in the water. This sub action's awesome. Civilians dying. I love it. Um, once it was on the island, I thought that's the movie got just a, a little bit better, if you ask me. Um, it was really cool, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how this Neanderthal guy, you know, could communicate with everyone that was there. And he just kept saying the same word. And they all knew what he was talking about. And it was really cool. Um, human nature just took took over. And it was – the one thing I didn't really understand was how they made the German guys look really smug and the American guys look really cavalier. I guess maybe that's a tie, you know, something that was happening back in the 50s and 60s. But I don't really think of Americans back during World War One being this cavalier. But that's fine. You know, I still enjoyed it. The, uh, the weapons – that were used. We had the torpedoes. That was cool. The guns taking out dinosaurs. Very realistic, I believe. Um, you know, dinosaurs probably have really thick skin, but when it comes to a piercing bullet, I mean, come on, you can't stop that at all. So very realistic <laughs> on that front. I loved it. Good point. I was going to, honestly, I was going to rate this just about as good as Atlantic Rim, 
9.6, but I got to come in at 9.5 only because they didn't make a joke about lifting up the dinosaur skirts. And that would have been a 9.6 right there. <laughs> wow. Mm. Two super solid movies for Alex in a row. He's loving it. He's on the warpath. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Um, well, uh, I actually do appreciate, even if it was tongue-in-cheek, some of the, the fact that Alex at least pointed to some observations that were different from what everyone else has said, because uh, I, I, I tend to agree with what, uh, what, what Kyle sort of paved the way with there, um, and everyone else kind of followed suit. Um, so to, I guess, point out some other observations, I, I kind of like when... These movies will uh, portray, you know, the the good German. Um, it's always interesting to see their take and how they uh, uh, how they do that, as opposed to always making, you know, obviously, you know, Nazis are evil. This is World War One, so pre pre Nazis, but uh, still still a German, uh, still the villain uh, with the captain. There it was interesting to see. He's kind of the nuanced, uh, science driven. Um, analytical member of the of the movie uh to sort of again almost like uh would have been interesting to see if there's almost like a love triangle that de developed in the film between the german captain uh the the uh the american lead and then of course the, the female in the movie but they didn't really get into any of that um I liked as as a, not to reiterate too much, but uh, I did like that they kind of subverted expectations with uh, the ending. Um, I, I feel like this is a period of time where it would have been easy for them to just you know have sunshine and rainbows at the end of the movie and the good guys get away, uh, but inversely they're stuck stranded on this island, uh, throwing messages in a bottle out into the ocean uh, in hopes of being saved. Um, would have been interesting to almost see like a follow up of how they uh, try to acclimate with the uh, caveman culture, um, or if they uh, attempt to go solo on this uh, lost world. Um, but um, some missed opportunities there, and uh, again, you know, the, uh, the 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 set design and the dinosaurs themselves looked goofy, kind of a product of the time. This is uh, the 70s. Uh, this is after sort of the era where anything would have been, you know, movie magic. I mean, if you would have seen this in the 40s or 50s, you'd have been like, oh, this is movie magic. This is amazing what they're able to accomplish uh, back then. But now it's like, eh, you know, there's some there's some good stuff coming out in the 70s, and this wasn't it. Um, and then, of course, in the 80s where it really, I feel like, starts to turn on a dime there and really get some incredible stuff like we've talked about The Thing and some of John Carpenter's stuff and, and uh, Jurassic Park and, and some of those that come out in the early 90s with, uh, with the dinosaurs and what they're able to do with practical effects. We're definitely in like a transitory period here where it just looked really bad. And the set looked bad, and it was hard to sort of have that suspension of uh, of, of disbelief there. Um, and it was just pretty transparent that you're watching kind of a dumb movie. Um, I'm gonna give it. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Kyle on this. I'm gonna give it a four. All right. Is that everyone? We got everyone. That's everyone. That's, That's all it. of us. Do we have a love it or hate it? Yes. Hit the yes. music. Do, do, do. I love it. I, it. Um, I hate it. I hate it. I'm hating it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Be careful with that. Not a sponsor. Okay. Love it. Hate it. What do we want first? Um, I think I went love it. Okay. You could have just used Alex's review. Sure. It's true. This is my about a ten. Let, let, let's hear. This is a uh, by oh, Elo Equipamentos, September two thousand nineteen. My masterpiece number eleven. In my teenage years, I had a fabulous experience in this picture based on Edgar Rice Burroughs. The whole concept amazed me for good. 
in World War I British and Germans has to left the war behind in a strange frozen land on the edge of South America in a volcanic island known as Crepona. Actually, in this prehistoric environment has a secret. The life itself will be coming more advanced on upriver, including a three different groups of prehumans. Several kinds of dinosaurs, great special effects, fantastic underwater cave scenes, and a perfect Nazi submarine from this period of time. Yes, Nazi Ilo- submarine indeed. <laughs> a logical plot transfer into the movie from Burroughs' mind. Doug McClure, <laughs> John McHenry, Keith Barron, <laughs> and finally Susan Penhaligon has an outstanding performance. All of them under the supervision of the great director, Kevin Connors. A fine piece of ass. Now, a fine piece of the, <laughs> <laughs> of the cinematic universe. Hard to be overcame nowadays. Few pictures tried to reach, but never matched such greatness. Had a sequel three years later, without the same impact. This picture, despite a low degree on IMDb, didn't change a thing in my mind. It's really a masterpiece. Resume, first watch, 1980. How many? Seven. Source, TV, VHS, DVD. Rating, 10. Wow. That's it. Hell of a writer. Who wrote that? That was Elo Equipamentos last year. <laughs> wow. Should have been uh, Wordsmith69420, if you nice. ask me. <laughs> All right, now time for the hate it. Okay. Now, I will make a note, listeners. IMDb did not have any one-star ratings for this movie. (laughs) Um, So I had to venture out to Amazon. This is Jeffrey Survives, one out of five. No subtitles and no closed caption. Reviewed in the United States on January 8th, 2016. No subtitles and no closed caption. That is discrimination against hearing impaired. The liberal (laughs) film industries hated the hearing disabilities and they forced our hearing impaired people to be illiterate. Don't buy (laughs) these DVDs without subtitles. That's it. Wow. Wow. That is a strong statement. Love it, hate it, everybody. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, that's, you know, polarizing, right? It's polarizing. It really is. But you know what would have made this movie maybe even worse? As if it were filmed at that lake, right? Where is that? The Salton, that Salton Sea. Salton sea? The Salton Sea. They were filmed damn, at that Salton God Sea. Goddamn Salton Sea. That's true. By the way, after we said that there wasn't many Salton Sea, if you search on IMDb film locations and put in Salton Sea, there's like 200 of them. Oh, can't wait for that cast. <laughs> uh, you talking about that season of this <laughs> show? Uh, yeah, Salton Sea season. Uh, <laughs> All things Salton Sea, day and night. Eventually, it would be like, oh, yeah, of course. This is from the east side of the Salton Sea. Yeah. This scene was Duh. shot over here on the Salton Sea. I would love to see how many listeners we'd get with that. <laughs> Live on the Salton Sea. <laughs> that'd be that'd be halfway through. Our 100th episode would be us at the Salton Sea. Well, I'd be get a houseboat on the Salton Sea. A little if casting that, out if there. that's possible, yeah. All right. Do you, want some, you guys want some trivia? Yes. Okay. Yes. So Amicus originally wanted to cast Doug McClure in the lead, but he refused. So they signed Stuart Whitman. Then Samuel Z. Arkoff of American International Pictures, AIP, came on board as co-financer, providing the bulk of the budget, but would only make the film if McClure was cast. So they changed uh, they, he, they changed his mind, and he agreed to do the film. And then on that, Kevin Connor, the director, said Doug was a great asset. In the fight scenes, he was especially good because he had done so much American TV. He knew exactly where the camera was at all times. He knew exactly how to throw those punches and where the effect would work on the screen. He always cooperate, uh, was cooperative and came up with many ideas. So apparently he's a big, ac- big asset on the set. Doug McClure, also, by the way, inspiration for Troy McClure on The Simpsons. No way. Yeah, so, so this. Wow. It's a combination of him and someone else, but McC- they took 
the last name from him and the first name from a different actor. And he's kind of a combination of those two actors. Uh, the real U-33 of World War I served in the Mediterranean and survived the war. So, was not lost in Caprona. And, but the submarine used in this was actually not a World War uh, I type. It was a Type 9 from World War II. That was a type of uh, boat that the model, I guess, was of. Um, Amicus went on to make two more Burrow adaptions, both with McClure. Uh, the People That Time Forgot was a 1977 direct sequel to this film, starring Patrick Wayne, Sarah Douglas. And then McClure came in at the end. He, I guess he's not the main focus of that movie. And then At the Earth's Core was in 1976, and McClure had a different role in that one with Peter Cushing and uh, Caroline Monroe. And then really? Germ so yeah, so if the sequel to this doesn't even involve him, I mean, really, what could it be about? Is it about the cave people? Then? It must be a new. It must be new people arriving on the island. Either maybe, uh, maybe by accident or looking for him, and they find him at a certain point. Okay, something like that. But they must be. He must be conspicuously absent from the first part where they're like, Oh, here we go. We're here. Looking, or we're trying to find him and he's not there. They're yet. looking for him. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, German actor, Anton Diffring dubbed John McHenry's voice as captain von Schoenvorts, allegedly because the producers felt McHenry was using a silly voice for the part. That's an actual trivia. Quit using that silly voice of yours. Well, you can imagine if someone was like, I'm you're German and they were like, Oh, these blueberries are so delicious. Like, uh, to, like a beer fest type thing. That. I like blueberries. He just keeps on talking about blueberries. I had a blueberry smoothie today. I had some blueberry jam, a PB&J sandwich. Uh, and this film, second one in a row, was featured in Rift on the Netflix series Mystery Science Theater 3000 The Return. Two times in a row we could be watching this as a Mystery Science wow. Theater 3000. Do we have four movies where we could do Mystery Science 3000? Oh, well, I know there's at least movies? one other one. So Mighty Jack is like a famous one with Submarine, which was a combination Mighty of a couple Jack. episodes of a Japanese TV series. All right. And then there, there's probably another one. I'm sure there's another there's gotta one. There's got to be. There's got to be. And then before, so we could watch the uh, Mystery Science Theater uh, 3000 versions of them as well. And then I don't know if guys, did you guys want to do any actual trivia? Sure. Let's go for it. Let's I was do thinking. This. I was thinking with World War One, since since it was kind of a surprise that this was set during World War One. I, I just went to the J Archive and I found a World War One uh, category on the J Archive. So um, who wants to go first? It's not Birthday Boy's birthday anymore. So, but he did give the highest score for this one. So Alex, you can go first. Uh, Two hundred, okay. four hundred, six hundred, eight hundred, or a thousand. I'm gonna start off two hundred. Okay, 200. The assassination that sparked World War I took place in this city. This city. Yeah. Damn, I know the person. I don't know the city. I, uh, I know, right? Yeah, I, know I think I know it. Maybe. I want to say... Kyle, you know what? Can I bet that you don't know it? I yeah. won $200. <laughs> uh, that's one of these, then. <laughs> so what do you think, Alex? Brussels. It's not Brussels, Kyle. <sighs> buzz, buzz, buzz. Is it Prague? It is not, and I win $200. It's ah. Sarajevo in Bosnia. I was uh, not getting that. Right. I never would have got that. All right. Who wants to go uh, next? Brom? Sure. Which one do you want? 400, 600, 800, 1,000? Uh, let's go 800. Oh, bing, bing, bing. Daily double. Do, 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 do. So I will, in, in I will this, wager well, 40,000. 40,000? My God. Okay. I mean, they I'm just wagered 2,000 in this game, so fine. Uh, German forces gave units from the UK, from this UK land the nickname, the Ladies from Hell, for their fighting spirit and uniforms. The nickname was what again? The Ladies from Hell. From this English land? UK land, yep. UK land. Ladies from Hell for their fighting spirit and uniforms. I don't know what that would be. I don't know buzz, my buzz, UK. Buzz, buzz, buzz. I know this one. 
Okay, I bet you, Kyle, I, I'm gonna, I'll, I'm I'll guess gonna the Cliffs of Dover. No. What is it, Kyle? Scotland. Yeah, you gotta think of the kilts. Yeah, man. Oh. Wearing skirts, baby. So they were nicknamed the Ladies from Hell. Ladies from Do hell. I get 40,000 then? No. It's uh, not, it's not so Laddies. Who, laddies from Hell. It's Ladies from Hell. It is Ladies from Hell. Oh, okay. Um, Zach, what do you want? 400, 600,000. Give me that sweet, sweet four. All right. At Xmas in this year, soldiers played soccer with foes. The next year, orders were given to kill anyone trying to do the same. Can you repeat that question, please? What's the answer? At, at Christmas in this year, oh, soldiers so, so I need played a year. soccer That's what yeah, you want. with foes. So the it, next year, orders were given to kill anyone trying to do the same. 1918. No. I'm going to guess now. This is a triple stumper, and it's tough. It's just like a random year. I'll say 1915. No. It is 1914. Oh, the first year. Yeah. You got the year they were going to kill everyone. Um, who hasn't done one yet? I have not. Kyle. But I've already six, answered, though. No, 600 or 1,000. Uh, let's go 600. This fence material became a deadly instrument. The National World War I Museum sells a replica soldier hanging on it. What is razor wire? Uh, judges? I think that's right. Barbed wire? Is barbed wire? wire? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then this is going to be one where you buzz in with your name. It's a thousand dollar question. Not to be confused with the Arden. I think that's, is that how you spelled it? Arden? Or how you pronounce it? Ardennes. This French forest was the site of the biggest World War I battle fought by the AEF. Not to be confused with the Ardennes. This French forest was the site of the biggest World War I battle fought by the AEF. No idea. Don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know either. I, know. I gotta say, this is a testament to how little I feel like World War One is actually known by people because I didn't know like any of these things. And it's the Argon, Argon Forest. Argon. Yeah. Mm, is it spelled like R O R or A R G O N N E? Yes, Argon. Yeah. Yes, it is. And well, most stuff's World War II, though, you know? That's what, exactly, that's, yeah. That's what we learn about. World War I's just, like, forgotten. All right, I'm going to finish up with a little Phantom Zone. Engage the Phantom. Phantom's engaged, sir. All right, this is easy. McClure was also in The Enemy Below, and we've done that one before on this show, so we could just use that. No big deal. But one interesting thing about this film is that Ed Harris was considered for the role, the main role, um, in between the time when McClure was like originally approached and then had had refused or whatever. And he became like totally enraged by the idea that he would be replaced by Ed Harris. And so he challenged him to a duel. And Ed Harris was like, fine. And McClure was like, I choose swords, not knowing that Ed Harris had won two gold medals as a fencing champion. And so he was killed in this duel, McClure. And so in the end, the producers were like, well, we're not making this film without McClure. So they had Ed Harris do a complete full body makeup to look just like McClure and acted the entire film out. And then no one even knew, and they had to give him a secret Academy Award for best makeup. And that's only happened. Wow. It's like only one time, there's four times it's ever happened. One <laughs> for this movie, and then three times for all the big mama's houses. <laughs> wow. Yeah. A secret Oscar. Mm-hmm. Wow. Best makeup. I believe it. Ed would yeah. be 25 at this movie. Is that right? Yeah, he's looking for blood. That makes sense. Yeah, that would have been just after he won his second gold medal, so. Yeah, dude, you don't challenge a fencing champ like that. No. Man. Pretty amazing. Well, I do not have a subs worldwide tonight. I thought I was going to get an opportunity to work on it, but I was terrorized by a 13-month-old who wouldn't nap and would not go to bed. In fact, didn't want to go to bed so bad, she got so mad and threw up all over the place because she was so mad. So that was 
how so my you, nights have transpired. Lately. So you didn't you didn't have any Bolu Worldwide or Galu Worldwide or Stolu? No, I know I should. Where you explain the different tribes? I really should have. Or a submarine sandwich worldwide. Believe me, I thought a lot about that sub sandwich worldwide. Hey, Jamie, if you needed yeah. to get a sub, where would you go? Right now? Yeah. At this very moment. Sure. <sighs> Boy, I mean, in town, you, talk, you you start to think about like firehouse subs because that one's one of the ones that I have nearby me. Subway is obviously like a classic, but I don't go there very often. Wait, um, we have a firehouse subs in town? Yeah. Since when? Since like two years ago. I'm living under a rock. You are. We got, got one fire here. Subs. We got here in, in town here, and I eat there quite a lot. It's one of the few places I go to eat during the quarantine. Yeah, so I think that would probably be my first one. The thing is, is I've, I don't eat subs very often, not anymore. In grad school, I ate, ate them a lot, but I've heard a lot of good things about firehouse subs, and that's probably where I would try if I was going to go to a place right now. That's all. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I will try a firehouse sub. <laughs> and report You back. can try one, too, and we'll talk about it next week. Okay. Uh, Alex, you got any news? Um, topically. You guys think I was actually looking up news? Before I even watched this movie today, or even knew what this movie was about, I was looking at my news today, and the article kind of, the headline made me laugh. It said, scientists finally figured out what killed the dinosaurs. Um, and I thought this was common knowledge between a lot of people, but this article that was just released today confirmed that it was, in fact, a giant asteroid that hit down near Mexico or someplace like that. Did anyone not know that? I thought that was common knowledge. I feel uh, like there's, there's other yeah. theories, I think. Excuse me? I think there's, there's been other theories and stuff, right? Right. Well, that's where it ties into the movie that we watched because the, one of the other major theories was volcanic activity. Right. As you can tell by watching this movie... That asteroid didn't kill all the dinosaurs. <laughs> and <laughs> if I had to guess, if that volcano goes off again, it's probably going to kill the rest of them there. But for real, that really wasn't my time, uh, my news today. I thought that was just really interesting. When I was watching this movie, I kind of chuckled. Since I love this movie so much, I actually looked up submarine moves from the same year this movie came out in 1975. I like that. Stop me, stop me if you guys have heard this one before. Scottish Cold War nuclear submarine collision kept secret for 43 years. Woo! So, right around the time that this movie was launched, uh, the U.S. had a, uh, a base for Cold War operations up in Scotland. And uh, the U.S. submarine James Madison, who may have been a president, uh, armed with 16 nuclear missiles, was heading out of the Navy base uh, when it actually collided with a Russian submarine uh, who was there patrolling uh, the port. There was um, both sink subs, then uh, they both rose, checked their damage, and then the Russian submarine got down and drove away. <laughs> and uh, this was kept secret, I guess, and this didn't come out until like 2000 and... When did this article come out? 2013? 2014, something like that. So it was kept secret for quite a long time. Uh, luckily, there was only scratches to both vessels. Otherwise, it probably could have been catastrophic. Um, and who knows? I, I, it just makes me kind of wonder if there are other incidents like this that we still don't know about, just not during the Cold War or even past it. Uh, I would think it's pretty rare for two submarines to actually strike like this. Um just within 30 miles of the coast. Um, you know, the ocean's such a large place. It depends if they're using place. that Caterpillar drive or not, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yes, thank you. I am sure there are other incidents that we are completely unaware of. Yeah, probably. Some of the stuff you got to keep top secret. Yeah. 
Yeah, this was, I guess, a part of a mass dump uh, of information. There was more than 12 million pages <laughs> that this article was a part of. Um, that all came out all at once. Million? Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe that? Who has the time, right? Dude, there's someone out there. But the uh, the the thing that they sent out for this article is just a telegram or, or a quick little word, and it was sent to Zach's favorite person, Henry Kissinger, oh, uh, yeah. about what was going on. Best friend. So, mm-hmm. That's all I looked up for. I didn't look up any Today News or anything like that. So if you guys found something, go for it. No, but I just I was looking around again. I usually look and see if there's any submarine film news. I know we're doing a Bond film uh, month coming up uh, in anticipation of the new Bond film. Do you guys know that the new Bond film is going to have submarines in it? No. That's what I, I just was reading an article about like what you may have missed about the new like the anticipated films from this year. And one of the things they say is a secret submarine base in the new Bond film. Nice. <sighs> that will be clutch. That is a yeah. big win for Submersion and listeners of Submersion across the globe. Yeah. I just, I was like shocked. I was like, wait a second. I didn't realize this one also has submarines in it. God, they love submarines. But, but who doesn't? So. Well, you know, the Royal Navy, you know, they're pretty big with their submarines. And just Navy in general. And I think that's what he was a part of, right? Before he became, well, the the story for James Bond, he was uh, a rear admiral or something like that in the Navy before he became a uh, secret agent. Really? I didn't know that. Uh Uh-huh. Well, very good. Uh, That'll That'll make an eighth... Bond film with submarines. Nine, if you count the uh, submersible alligator that Roger Moore piloted. <laughs> I mean, you the got video it. Cause... on that is insane. <laughs> you got it. Because they also had what one of the submarines was also like a, a, a glacier or an iceberg or something, right? Uh, I'm not sure. We'll find out I during we'll James out. Bond submarine movie month. So I got a small little blip of some news. Our guy, H.I. Sutton, did a, a little news story today on the, Russia's newest submarine caught in unusual satellite image. That's over on theforbes.com, just Forbes.com. And, um, you know, it just shows a little satellite image. And you see the submarine and you see the um, visible wake that stretches beyond five miles from that submarine. So the wake is still moving five miles behind five? the submarine be- from the wow. from the submarine because it's so big. The um and this is the big one. This is the um the the, the one that they just uh, launched. We've been talking about it a little bit. The the Niaz Vladimir. So, yep. That's cr- that's a huge wake. Yeah, it, and this is the huge. It's the one that joined the fleet back in June twelfth on. Um, uh, these is it Bore Bore A class submarines armed with sixteen inter- con- intercontinental ballistic missiles um, of a range of five thousand miles. They carry six to ten nuclear warheads. Now the wake on that, I mean, it's probably when you're talking like five miles, it's probably something you can only sense from up above, right? Um, I would assume. I mean, if you're out, let's say I'm out jet skiing, having the time of my life in Russian waters. I don't know if I'd, you think I would feel that like five miles away? No, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's like that. I think like if you were five miles behind that submarine, never knowing a submarine went by, you'd be like, oh, look at these waves. These came out of nowhere. That's insane. That's a huge wave. Yeah, five miles is a long time, especially on water. (laughs) Yeah. Can I make a correction? I just want to. I looked up the James Bond thing. He was a commander, not a rear admiral. So I gave him a little bit too much credit. So I just want to fix that for any of the Bond fans out there. Very cool. Ready to count this down? You got to count it down, right? I'm going to count it down. Tube three, ready to fire, sir. Commence the countdown. Four, three, two, one. 
give it to me. All right. So I'm back on the countdown this week, and uh, we're going to be transitioning over. I always have been, or at least not always, but I've been getting into the habit of letting people know what to watch for uh, next week. Uh, we are going to be shifting gears to Anime Movie Month or Anime Television, or Anime Media Month. Uh, we're going to be watching some submarine animes, uh, some of them being very, very much sub-centric. Uh, but if you would like to watch along, uh, we are going to be starting off with Space Battleship Yamato. Uh, we're watching Season 1, Episode 1, 2, and 13 uh, to wet our whistle on submarine action in the Space Battleship Yamato series. But just from the name, I'm excited about it. Um, we're talking about battleships and submarines in space. So we're in uncharted territory uh, so that'll be exciting. Um, but along that line, there are other things that I am anticipating, uh, films and, and television that I am looking forward to. Uh, I know some of our listeners have sounded off on some movies that they're still hoping to uh, see us recap. Uh, we've obviously hit, at this point, having uh, 109 episodes under our belt. We've watched uh, most of the uh, the uh, the classics and the the uh, linchpins of the uh, of the submarine movie world, but uh, we still have a few out there. I know I've heard a few people want to hear uh, want to hear us uh, review Waterworld for the two seconds that a submarine is on screen, uh, but uh, it counts, so we have to do a micropod on that at some point. And uh, as part of our anime cycle, uh, the the gentleman that uh, helped in uh, uh, facilitating and curating a list of uh, anime for us with submarines. He's he's really looking forward to Mars Daybreak. It's uh, among his favorite anime in terms of uh, submarine and anime uh, content. Uh, but I have my top five most anticipated sub films and television that I'm going to be counting down tonight. And we're just... I'm going to jump right in here with number five. I am looking forward to, and this is the only one on here. Well, actually, I think there might be one other that I've seen. Uh, this one will be a revisit for me. I just haven't seen it in so long. It's Independence Day. Ah, it's a micropod, right? The original. Yeah, we'll probably do a micropod. We'd have to double check, but I think the submarine's kind of in the early stage of the movie and uh, initially spots the mothership or something like that. Something uh, like that, yeah. Uh, the USS Georgia uh, found out that it uses the Crimson Tide interior set. So we've seen a lot of the Crimson Tide CGI recycled uh, for some of that exterior combat, dodging torpedoes, things like that, countermeasures. Um, there's been a few, maybe only, but, but less, uh, of, uh, of that interior set, but I know that's come, come up a few times as well, but, um, great beer and wings film. I, I always enjoyed that one, but it has been, it has been a number of years since I've seen it. And I know Alex and Zach are big fans as well. Kyle, I haven't heard you talk about it, but it seems like a movie that's up your alley. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah. Looking forward to it. ID4, the original, um, and we'll have to figure out when that gets plugged in. It's not on the schedule yet. I do love that you movie. You got Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum on screen. I mean, yeah, who, you can't who, go wrong with that combo. Yeah, uh, Alex, uh, you like the director, right? Mm-hmm. Was it Emmerich or something? Roland Emmerich? Roland Emmerich. Roland, yep. Yeah. I'm just a huge Randy Quaid fan, so. <laughs> and Randy his, Quaid, my his, God. His character's pretty good in that movie, though. He is. It's a good one. Uh, number four, looking forward to Thunderball, 1965 mm -hmm. classic Bond. Uh, this is one of the early Bond movies uh, that has a really epic underwater battle scene with the two armies swimming straight at each other. Uh, it's like something out of, <laughs> I don't know, like Braveheart or something, but underwater. It's, it's, it, it, it looks ridiculous, and they're <laughs> That's charging. That's a good way to put it. I mean, yeah. we should put that on the DVD case. <laughs> Yeah. Braveheart for underwater. It's like the Lorelei case, the uh, Japan's answer to Das Boot. It's uh, yeah, it's James Bond's underwater battle answer to Braveheart uh, as they uh, 
venture into battle with their harpoon guns and all that good stuff. But uh, that's a fun one. Also, the lovely Claudia Auger is the Bond girl in that. Uh, this is an incentive for everyone to uh, join our Discord. Uh, I'm posting the lovely Claudia Auger in our Discord right now. But look at this cutie, guys. This is what we get to look forward to here in a couple months with uh, the James Bond movie month. Uh, but that's my number four. Uh, number three is Das Boot, the rebooted TV series. So mm. I haven't seen this yet. Uh, new season just came out in April, season two, that is. Uh, poor I reviews. should note here, Go ahead. I did get word from the library. They agreed to purchase this season of the show for me. You got that? You got them to purchase something? Yeah. They've, okay, always, they, they've always denied me. They're buying me. Das Boot. But then again, I always request really bad movies. So, <laughs> yeah, I think there's a little more cultural re relevance with uh, the new Das Boot series. Yeah, I, I guess when they, they ask, they actually ask you like, what's the cultural relevance or what's the relevance of this that you're asking to buy? And I guess it's not a good sign that I'm like, this is considered one of the worst movies ever made, and that's why it's <laughs> culturally relevant. Uh, but. Uh regardless of all that however we track it down i look forward to watching it um uh, it's it, it's actually had poor reviews overall but i'm i'm holding on to hope that uh we'll appreciate it for its submarine uh action and uh drama uh also uh beautiful Liz, lizzie kaplan's on that uh who's always nice to look at but uh das boot that's my number three the new tv series uh, number two is Greyhound coming out mm. uh, July 10th on Apple's streaming service. So a few weeks away, to, uh, depending on when you listen to this. Um, I mean, what else is there to say about this? It's been starting to get advertised out the wazoo here. Uh, it looks like it's going to be an intense thriller um, and stars who may end his career as arguably the greatest actor or most you know biggest actor of all time uh tom hanks so uh it looks looks like a real fun one that's true i think he's seven foot five is that right i that sounds right um biggest actor of our time biggest actor and number one, uh, this may surprise uh, some folks here but uh i really want to see the hunley so the Hunley oh. uh, follows the story of the H.L. Hunley, a Confederate submarine who sank an enemy warship in the Siege of Charleston in 1864. You heard that right. We're talking Civil War submarine combat, and it stars Armand Asante and mm. our, our friend, and particularly Alex's close friend, Donald Sutherland. Um, that. It's, it's just so far out there talking about like space battleship Yamato. Uh, we're, we're in some new terrain, new waters here when we're talking about civil war submarine combat seems impossible to, to fathom it pun, does. pun not intended, but uh, looking forward to that one and uh, not scheduled yet, but uh, someday soon we will, we'll get to it. And yeah, uh, I, feel I like look that, forward to I feel it. like that movie is like, it just seems really hard to imagine in the Civil War time them being like, get in this thing and we're going underwater and you'll probably die. And everyone's like, great, <laughs> I'll do it. That one's been on our radar for, sorry, Locked on our forever. summer for so long. Yeah, I feel like uh, when we first started, it was on the on the list to watch, like when, when our list was only like 25 movies long. And it just kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. There's not really a place for it. It's not like we're going to find three other uh, <laughs> Civil, War Civil War movies to bunch it into, but uh, we'll find a way. We'll... Maybe TV movies. Is, is it a TV movie? It is a TV movie. Yep, TNT. So maybe it's TV movies. Yep, Star but that movie. is my top five uh, submarine films and television that I'm looking forward to. And uh, if anyone else has any other recommendations or what one that uh, we haven't got around to yet that they want to share, hit us up, let us know, make sure we have it on our list. We've got a backlog of like 75 movies still, so uh, we're going strong, but uh, we'll still take any uh, recommendations you got. I think Yellow Submarine's a pretty popular movie that we haven't touched That's true. And very subcentric. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Okay. Let's pass it over to the Zack. Get it. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Zack facts, it's Zack facts. When you're going down, get some Zack facts. When you're going down, Zack facts, Zack facts. Fact number one. After filming concluded, many of the dinosaurs were unable to find work, which led to the creation of the Dinosaur Inclusion Caring Kickoff, or Dick for short. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> Fact number two. The original ending had the sailor reappear from the beginning of the film, but this time it would be the prehistoric man Borg. <laughs> now, I could actually see that happening. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That that would be crazy. <laughs> Wouldn't it though? I literally sat here and I was like, what's the craziest thing that could probably happen in this movie? <laughs> it's like if he showed back up. <laughs> oh man. Oh, he's still he's in like that <laughs> that old sailor's outfit, but you still got that super oh, hairy no. face. You're like, oh my gosh. Like, what would you even think like the movies about? You just wonder like how <laughs> He couldn't even read it, yeah. could he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. They should have done that. Uh, fact number three. The dinosaurs were known for being ornery on set. It was revealed <laughs> that they had all those teeth and no toothbrush. Oh, uh, good. Okay. Good nice. one. Nice. I get it. Last fact. In order to make the ending submarine scene as realistic as possible, director Kevin Connor had the submarine with the actors inside airlifted via helicopter above an active volcano and let it hover for three hours. <laughs> the actors were never told. <laughs> I believe me, it was getting real steamy in that thing. <laughs> and people did look panic stricken. That's a pretty impressive <laughs> helicopter. They must have used the helicopter from Street Sharks. Thank you for listening to Submersion. Don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every Thursday. If you like what you heard, please leave us a rating wherever you listen. Want to interact with us? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also love to get messages from all of you. If you have a suggestion, a comment, or just anything you'd like to share, please email us at maceaststudios at gmail.com. Three, two, one. Howdy, 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 everybody. That should be a good clap, It was right? a good clap, too. No, I, I don't want uh, to denigrate your clap. It was also good. Not as good as the first right. one, though, unfortunately. That, that was, She's got that, the clap. That was a 6 out of 10 for me. Damn. I know. I know. Damn, damn, damn. You know okay. why they Dude. call it the clap? No. Why do they call it the clap? Because you got to clap your penis real hard to get rid of it, right? Exactly. Jamie knew mm -hmm. it. Because he's had it. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, oh. it. I think in the old day, they would put your dick in between like two pieces of wood and smack it really hard. That's what they used to do. Could you imagine no, that? It's called Peter, the clap. It's called. It's because Peter Pan was an extended allegory about getting chlamydia. That's what the clap is, right? Chlamydia. It is chlamydia. Yeah, uh, and, and so it got out, because smashed. clapping is a big part of it, which was just a wishful thinking of getting rid of chlamydia at the time. Um, they started calling it the clap. That's a Zach fact. <laughs> do you guys know who sings the the Jack? ACDC? AC -DC? Yep. I think that's about the clap. The clash? Why would they sing about another band? No. The clap. Huh. <laughs> well. This will make a fine after outro <laughs> segment. There we go.